you started it, did you know you wanted to turn it into something big? Or was it a good creative outlet for that time of your life then? When I started at the inception, it really was just for you know, myself, my friends, and I didn't really know, I didn't foresee the community that I was creating, and I didn't foresee the brand that I was unwittingly creating. So the first couple of years were really just, um, I don't, I, I sometimes look back and I think like, what the heck was I doing? <laughs> like, why did I do that? Like any entrepreneur, right? I probably didn't all look back and ask those questions. <laughs> right. Well, so now you've, you've taken it to a new level. You had big news yesterday, hiring Lisa Gersh as your new CEO. Yeah. Um, so what do you, I mean, do you and Lisa have immediate plans for Goop? We have a lot of very exciting plans. I mean, we, Goop is becoming this amazing collective of really bright, really um, fascinating women who I'm learning so much from. And um, we were, you know, we're small, but we're growing. And I really, when it started to become clear to me that it, it was a business and that we were, having impact on other businesses and um, that it could actually be something. I was, you know, so lucky to meet Lisa through Tracy Anderson. We had been working together for a year. Um, and when my, my first CEO, I moved to LA and he was in London. And so when we parted ways, he stayed on, you know, as an advisor, but I w was looking for somebody here to help me really take it to the next level. And, you know, fate as fate would have it. I, Lisa, you know, was over for dinner one night and said she would take the job. And look smack down for Martha. Oh. Um, you had, you actually had a better term for it last night that since I'm on my best behavior up here, I won't repeat. <laughs> but um, so this is what Martha Stewart said about Gwyneth a couple of weeks ago. This is well before the Lisa announcement. And okay. in fact, she just needs to be quiet. She's a movie star. If she were confident in her acting, she wouldn't be trying to be Martha Stewart. Uh, so, meow. Um, uh, so, Gwyneth, how, so what's your reaction to that? Um, first of all, no one has ever said anything bad about me before, so I'm <laughs> shocked and devastated. <laughs> I'll try to recover. Um, um, you know, if I'm really honest, I am so psyched that she sees us as competition. <laughs> like, I'm so psyched. I really am. So that's sort of. It means your fate is sealed as lifestyle world domination, <laughs> right? Um, so, I mean, do you, speaking of public criticism, do you feel, does it get easier over time? I mean, you do get, uh, you know, like, like many people in your shoes, you get public criticism. Yeah. Do you, how do you, in this case, where it's a business thing, do you right. feel like when someone is attacking your business versus mm -hmm. attacking you personally, is there right. a different reaction in you? I think that when anybody criticizes anyone, um, it really is just, it's revealing more about where they are in time and space as opposed to where you are in time and space, and I think um, generally, we tend to, you know, lash out if we're in a, you know what I mean? It's usually yeah. a reflection of something else, and so I try not to, I don't actually, at this point in my life, I don't, I don't take it personally. I see it as a, as a projection, and, you know, and then if there's ever anything, you know, that sticks, then I know, oh, maybe I'm holding this judgment against myself, and mm. I need to look at that. Mm. Um, but it's, it's, it's very interesting. And you know, sometimes I learn good things from criticism, so. You like know. you're gonna dominate the lifestyle space now. <laughs> you're 